All right, so this is the second example on finding the arc length of a curve. And so what we have here is if the derivative is continuous on AB, then the length of the curve y equals f of x from a to b is the length is the integral of the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared from a to b dx and th this also works if uh, if our function is in terms of y this would be f prime of y squared and it would just be dy so we would be taking the antiderivative with respect to y. Alright, so let's look at the second example. And here it says find the length of the arc of the curve from point P to point Q. And they give us x equals y to the fourth over 8 plus 1 over y, uh, 1 over 4y squared. Alright, and we want to go from 3 eighths 1 to 3 over 33 over 16 2. That's the point. All right, so you can see that this this curve here is solved for x. Okay, so we have we have our uh, function in terms of y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of x with respect to y. So if I take the derivative of x with respect to well, first before we do that, let's do this to make it a little bit easier. Let's rewrite it. That's going to be uh, let's write it as one eighth y to the fourth, let's just kind of separate this a little bit, plus, and then that's going to be one-fourth y to the negative two. So if I bring y squared up, that's going to change the sign of the exponent and give me y to the negative two. So now let's go ahead and take the derivative. So the four times one-eighth, that's going to be one-half y cubed, and then bring the two down minus one-half y to the negative two. 3. Okay, so there's y prime. All right, so you know my formula is 1 is the, well, the, the part that's inside the integral is the square root of 1 plus, and then that's the derivative squared. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to square this thing and then add one to it. All right, so I'm going to do all this. I'm not going to write the integral down just yet. I'm going to go ahead and calculate all this and see what it comes out to and then I'm going to stick it underneath the radical, underneath the square root and put it in the integral. So first, let's take the derivative, which is this, and square it. So that's going to be one half y cubed minus one half y to the negative three and all of that is squared. Alright, so you know that's going to give me one half y cubed minus one half y to the negative three times one half y cubed minus one half y to the negative three. Okay, so now I need to fold this out. So I'm going to multiply, that's going to be one fourth y to the sixth uh, minus, yeah, minus one fourth. Because look, when I multiply the outside, one half times one half is one fourth. Y cubed times y to the negative three is y to the zero, which is one. Okay. Then I multiply the inside. That's the same thing, minus one fourth, and then plus one fourth y to the negative six. Okay. And so that is going to give me one fourth y to the sixth minus, and then the one fourth plus the one fourth, uh, or the minus one fourth minus one fourth is going to give me minus one half, one fourth y to the negative six. Okay, so that's the derivative squared. And so now I need to add one to it. So one plus one fourth y to the 6 minus 1 half, whoop, that's a plus there, plus 1 fourth y to the negative 6, that's going to give me 1 fourth y to the 6 plus 1 half, the 1 minus 1 half, plus 
1 fourth y to the negative 6. Okay, so that's what I get underneath the radical. Now let's go back and refresh your memory uh, on factoring. And we got a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to a plus b squared. Okay, so how do I know if it factors like this? Well, if I can take the square root of this term, the square root of this term, that's square root of that is a, square root of that is b. Okay, so if I multiply the two together, that gives me a, b, and then double it, I get the middle term. Okay, so look at this. If I take the square root of this, that's going to be what? One half y cubed. Take the square root of this, or raise it to the one half, that's going to be what? one half y to the negative three. Multiply them together, that's going to give me one fourth, right? And then y cubed times y to the negative three is y to the zero, which is one. Okay, and then I double it, and that gives me one half. So that gives me that middle term there. So that means that this factors into this. So I know it's going to factor into this. Well, how do I get this? Well, this term here is the square root of that term, and this term here is the square root of the last term. So, the square root of the first term, that's 1 fourth y cubed plus, and then that's going to be 1 half y to the negative 3. And all of that squared. Okay, So that's what, that, uh, that's what I get underneath the radical. Okay, so I've got the length of the arc is the integral, and it's the square root, and remember, it's the square root of this, okay? Well, what did I get for that? I got this. So that's going to be 1 fourth y cubed plus... Nope, I'm sorry. This should be one half. My bad. Okay. All right. And then that's going to be plus one half y to the negative three. All of that squared and dy. Now, what am I integrating? Well, from this point to this point. Well, my function is in terms of y, and it's going from 1 to 2. So that's from 1 to 2. Okay. All right, so let's see what we've got. Well, this is what? This is the integral 1 to 2. Look, the square root of this okay, is just 1 half y cubed plus one-half y to the negative three dy. And so now I integrate this. That's going to give me one-half times, and then I add one, so that's to the fourth, multiply by the reciprocal of the new exponent after we add one. All right, plus one-half, and then add one, so that's y to the negative two. Okay. Multiply by the reciprocal of the new exponent, so that's times negative one half, and that's going from one to two. All right, so let's kind of just multiply these together in another step. So that's one eighth y to the fourth minus one fourth y to the uh, negative two. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as one fourth y squared. One over four y squared. I'm going to go ahead and take this y to the negative two and move it down here in the denom denominator so we can evaluate it a little bit better. All right, so now let's see what we've got. Well, we just need to evaluate it, so that's going to be one eighth times two to the fourth minus 1 over 4 times 2 squared minus, 
and now let's plug the 1 in, 1 8th, 1 to the 4th, minus 1 over 4 times 1 squared. Okay, And that is going to give us, well this will be 2 minus, and that's going to be 1 16th, minus 1 8th, minus 1 4th. And after we do our arithmetic, we get 33 over 16 would be the arc length. All right, so that, that video was kind of long, but it was a little more difficult problem. Uh, I'll have three examples. Uh, the next, the third example, that will have a trig function in it, so you might want to check that out. Uh, check out my other videos. I got more calculus videos. Give me a like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.